Ray Douglas Bradbury. He was born in 1920 in Wokegon, Illinois, and he died at age 91 in Los Angeles in 2012. His hometown is memorialized in dandelion wine, and something wicked this way comes, as a town called Greentown. He sees it as a safe place, a place of childhood. Yet odd things happen. His family was working class, and they moved between Wokegon and Tucson, Arizona several times, as his father was able to find work. Eventually they moved in 1934 to Los Angeles, where they stayed. Bradbury had a fabulous memory. And he writes about details from his childhood as he sought out the company of movie stars, snuck into movies, and began reading and writing voraciously. He read all of the early science fiction authors, such as H.G. Wells, Edgar Allan Poe, Jules Verne, and then he devoured science fiction magazines like Astounding Science Fiction. When they moved to Los Angeles, he joined the Los Angeles Science Fiction Society and began writing more seriously. He wrote every day, a habit that continued into his old age. Even though he was good at it, and his high school teachers encouraged him, he never went to college. He instead credited the library with his education. He was rejected from the military because of his bad eyesight, so he couldn't join other young men in fighting for his country during World War II. He considered becoming an actor and studied acting, but when he started writing, his future was set. He published his first story in science fiction magazine Imagination in 1938. Then he started his own magazine called Futuria Fantasia, but it only lasted four issues. In his early 20s, Bradbury devoted himself full-time to writing, and his first collection was published in 1947 as Dark Carnival. Because his stories were not traditional science fiction, he had trouble publishing in the genre magazines. Sometimes he would turn to more mainstream magazines, and one of his first magazine stories was published in Mademoiselle. He claimed that he only wrote one science fiction novel, Fahrenheit 451. Many of his other stories were fantasy. He resisted calling himself a science fiction writer, instead believing that he was merely a writer, like any other. His most famous novel, the one read by nearly every high school student, is Fahrenheit 451. It was first published as a novella, The Fireman, and then as a novel in 1953. It is considered a dystopian novel, where firemen burn books instead of saving houses. Reading books is illegal because they make people unhappy. People really just want to be happy, which means that they want to be entertained. And books provide too much conflict. The government didn't just ban books, though. Bradbury blames such censorship on what he calls minorities, groups of people that are offended by some part of a work. When that work is offensive, the book is banned because the publisher stops publishing it. Some other group is offended by something else. Then that work is no longer available. And the government eventually said enough with it and banned all books. Ironically, Fahrenheit 451, too, has been one of the most banned books in the United States. When he died in 1912, the New York Times claimed that he made science fiction mainstream. And that is because he was not a typical science fiction author. Instead, he was more like a mainstream author that used science fiction. His stories were so popular that they were adapted in many, many television shows, as well as other mediums, including plays, comic books, and movies. He received many honors as well. When one of his stories was made into an episode of The Twilight Zone, Bradbury was upset that a major component was removed, and he would not let another of his stories be adapted, at least by The Twilight Zone. That didn't stop him from letting other shows adapt them, however. Bradbury even had his own TV show, The Ray Bradbury Theater, which adapted many of his own stories, as well as the works of others. Bradbury was married for 56 years to Marguerite McClure, known as Maggie, and the couple had four daughters. And then he died after prolonged illness in 2012. The next day, President Barack Obama said, quote, For many Americans, the news of Ray Bradbury's death immediately brought to mind images from his work, imprinted in our minds often from a young age. His gift for storytelling reshaped our culture and expanded our world. But Ray also understood that our imaginations could be used as a tool for better understanding, a vehicle for change, and an expression of our most cherished values. 
There is no doubt that Ray will continue to inspire many more generations with his writing. If you'd like more help with Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451, or with just about any other major work of literature, check out our handy two-page cheat sheet study guides available from www.cheatsheetsonline.com. They're all you need to know in two pages. Cram for the exam with Cheat Sheets Online.